Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go. I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey everyone. My name is Sarah McCarthy and I am so excited that you are joining me as we write down the following standard. Today's standard is MA.4.DP. That stands for Data Analysis and Probability.1.1. And this standard says to collect and represent numerical data. That means data with numbers, including fractional values using tables, stem and leaf plots, or line plots. So these are the three that we're focusing on, tables, stem and leaf plots, and line plots. And if you are anything like me, I had no idea what a stem and leaf plot was until I studied it. <laughs> I've not heard of it before, but now I know what it is, <laughs> and it's great. So we will learn together. Uh, this example right here says a softball team is measuring their hat size. Each player measures the distance around their head to the nearest half inch. See that incorporation of fractions right there. The data is collected and represented on a line plot, which has not been provided, but just kind of saying what this kind of example would be. By the way, this document that I'm marking up all over is something that is provided by the Florida Department of Education. They release it to the public. And in these Breaking Down the Best episodes, I'm just showing you my thought process as I break down the standards, helping to make sense of them a little bit. And then we'll spend the second half of this video walking through resources that are strategically aligned to the standard and you're taking on the best membership. So first we'll study and then we'll hop over the website and see how it strategically aligns, okay? For benchmark clarifications, it says denominators are limited to the following. We've seen that a lot this year, okay? And then some related benchmarks in fourth grade. There's a bunch of them actually. We've got ma.4.nso.1.2, which is plotting, ordering, and comparing decimal numbers. And I was kind of like, how does this relate with decimal numbers? I understand with fractions, like plotting, ordering, comparing fractions, maybe. I'm not really sure with decimals why that one relates, but that's what they said. Um, we also have 4.fr.1.3, which is, involves equivalent fractions, and 1.4, which is that plotting, ordering, comparing fractions that we were talking about. We have 4.m.1.1, measuring length, liquid volume, and temperature kind of collecting that data and representing it here. So that can definitely play a role with this standard. Some terms that you need to know, a line plot looks like this, where we've kind of got a number line going on and we plot the data using X's or I've seen dots even. So just know that it can vary a little bit. And then a stem and leaf plot has a stem and a leaf and it can be used with whole numbers it can be used with fractions if you have no idea what a stem and leaf plot is you are in the right place and i'll show you in just a second what it looks like but we've got a stem and a leaf and it's broken down that way okay we have some alignment from third grade where are they coming from well we have 3.dp.1.1 and 1.2 1.1 is representing or collecting and representing data and then 1.2 is the interpretation of data for third grade. And then in fifth grade, we definitely take it up, collecting and representing data. And then we have 1.2 in fifth grade, which involves the mode, which we have in fourth, the range, which we have in fourth, the median, which is coming up in fourth, and the mean, which is not a fourth grade aspect, but know that finding the mean, finding the average is something new that they will be exposed to in, in fifth grade, sorry. All right, next, purpose and instructional strategies. Let's see what jumped out at me here. 
It says the purpose of this benchmark is to collect authentic data and display the data using a, the appropriate format. Students will be using stem and leaf plots and other methods like tables and line plots. And in fifth grade, we have fractional and decimal data will be included there. Okay, here we go. A stem and leaf plot displays numerical data and uses place value to display data frequencies. In a stem and leaf plot, a number is decomposed. It's broken down so that the leaves represent the smallest part of the number, like the ones place or a fraction less than one. And the stem consists of all its other place values, like the hundreds, tens, ones when we're working with fractions, greater than one. Stem and leaf plots help to build line plots. Once you have a stem and leaf plot created, it makes it a lot easier to build your line plot. Not that you have to create a stem and leaf plot to create a line plot, but just know that it is helpful. Once you have one done, it makes the other one a little bit easier. Here it says stem and leaf plots can help students identify benchmarks for their number lines when creating a line plot. A stem and leaf plot organizes data by size, going from least to greatest or greatest to least, and identifies the mode of its data. It could also be used to find the median and the range. So the mode is the data value that appears the most, and the median is the middle number. The range is finding the greatest minus the least, and that will give you the range. So let's, let's move on down so you can see. So here is a table that has been provided. You can see that we have one fourth has occurred one time, two fourths has occurred two times, three fourths has occurred one time. We see that, right? Um, let's take this one fourth as an example. One fourth. So if we look over here at the stem, there is not a whole number attached to that one fourth. So the one fourth that we're seeing in the frequency table appears right here. Two fourths appears two times. So right here where the stem is zero, because we have zero holes, we have one, two fourths, two fourths. It occurs twice. Three fourths occurs once. So there's that. Now notice here, one and two fourths. Now we have a whole number of one. The one is the stem, it's the whole number. And then we have a two fourths there. So this is an interesting way to be given the data. It's a nice way to, to translate it over. And then we can take the data off of the leaf and put it onto a line plot. So you can see we have one fourth, two two fourths, one three fourth. Okay, so that's that. We do break it down in the videos a little bit more. So if you are like, I still am not quite sure, definitely take a look at the video lesson because that will help to break it down, which I'll show you in just a minute after we finish with this. Okay. Some common misconceptions or errors. It says that students may misread the number line. That is true. They may also read the key incorrectly. That is true. They may also have no idea what a line plot is or a stem and leaf plot is and or how to arrange it. So those are common things of like, where do I even put this? So there's a lot that, a lot of misconceptions that could take place with this standard. But I think once they understand how to organize using a stem and leaf plot, it's not that bad. All right, here it says measure the length of 10 pencils in the class. So that would be collecting data and then create a stem and leaf plot and a line plot to represent the data. So you can see with this type of question right here, we are nailing the standard. In this one, here's a table given and it's saying how many X's would we put on a line plot? Four, four and three eighths. So how many times did it occur? One, two, three times it occurred. So it would be, there would be three X's above that on a line plot. So just, that's a question that doesn't even have a display of a line plot, but just showcases that you understand what a line plot is. All right, I think that is it for breaking down this standard. Let's go ahead and hop over to the website and see what you have access to with your Taking on the Best membership. All right, so here we are at the website. We're gonna click right here at Members Enter here. Select Taking on the Best, fourth grade. Scroll down to the DP strand. And then we want ma.4.dp.1.1, which was representing data, stem and leaf plots, 
and line plots. You can see that we're going to get into mode, median, range, and real world problems, all that. But today we're focusing on the stem and leaf plots and the line plots. For the very first page that opens up will be your bronze resources. These include the video lessons and the printable notes. So the video lessons, you can see we have one, two video lessons here. All right, the first video lesson is all about representing data using stem and leaf plots and line plots with whole numbers. So this is all about going from stem and leaf plots and line plots, just whole numbers. The next one contains mixed numbers and fractions. So if we take a little look, so we're just gonna put a, okay, so in this video, you can see how we're breaking it down. We're given some test scores. We're saying, okay, we notice that the tens place that occurs are the seven, eight, nine, and 10. Here's the key. We talk about what the key means that right here, 75 means seven and five. We put the ones place there. After we take the data from the table and put it onto the stem and leaf plot, then we take that same data and we put it onto a line plot. So that's really just the transfer of information from one display to another. That's the main focus of the standard. The next one is the same thing, just that we have fractions, which we'll see a little bit closer in a little bit, okay? So the whole point of these bronze resources, the video lessons, is to make it fun and to make it click. It's not, the students are not expected to master these concepts after just one video lesson. They need to practice. That's how they will achieve mastery. So that's why I have the silver plan for you as well. So if you have access to that, you have access to even more resources that are aligned to the standard. You just click here for the printables. All right, so this will have your video lessons with the extra practice right behind it to make it easier for you to print. So you can see here we've got the video lesson page, same as what we just looked at. So Matthew tracks the scores for all of his math tests. We're going to create a stem and leaf plot and a line plot. After students do that in the video lesson, they can use their notes to build this one. Now Isabella tracks all of her science test scores. We're gonna take the scores off of the table, put it onto the stem and leaf plot, and then to the line plot. And there is an answer key so students can check themselves. Then we have another video lesson with stem and leaf plots with uh, mixed numbers here. So now we have the time that students sleep on average each night, this numerical data, we're gonna take it off. So we'll put the whole numbers as the stem and the fractions as the leaf part of it. Here's our key. Then we'll take that data off of the stem and leaf plot to help us create the line plot in the video lesson. So now students have notes for that and they can use those notes for the extra practice page, which looks very similar. Just instead of time sleeping each night, they're talking about miles walking, okay? And then we have a math mission right here. So, this says write the fractions, zero fifths, one fifth, two fifth, three fifths, and four fifths on shiny, on tiny, <laughs> on tiny pieces of paper and fold them up. Create random mixed numbers by rolling a dice and picking one of the fraction pieces of paper and record that as a mixed number. We're gonna do this 15 times, then use that data to create a stem and leaf plot with a key and then a line plot. So you can see here, collecting and representing data. This is nailing the standard and it's fun because students get to create their own numbers there, okay? Then the last activity for the silver plan is the Math Misconception Mystery episode. You can see it's a video, so we'll go right here to the silver page and click play. In these videos, I will walk you and your students through the entire process. First, they will solve this problem either on their own or with a small group and then they will watch as four characters, same problem. The whole point of this is that three of the characters are going to make mistakes that students commonly make and only one of the characters will be correct. So students really have to focus, they have to pay attention and listen to what is being said and what is being worked out. By the way, these characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes, so it makes it super fun for that. And then they have the detective report to fill out afterwards describing who the most reasonable answer belongs to and evaluating the work of the three characters that were incorrect. All, everything that we've gone over, the answer keys for that are right here, okay? And then if you have the silver plan, you have access to that, everything that we've gone over, plus even more. You have a mini assessment right here and you have this for every single standard. So you can see the standard is right here. It says show what you know so you can use this as a mini assessment or as extra practice, however you want to use it. 
and usually there's about four to five questions. You can see the variety of question types, specifically aligned. Okay, there we go. The answer key for that is right here. You also, as a gold member, have access to these breaking down the best episodes, which go over all of their resources and break down the standard. It's right here with all of your resources just being a click or two away. And uh, just know that these videos are available also on YouTube. They just contain ads. So it's a nice little bonus of being a gold member, having it ad free right there. The highlight though of the gold plan is having access to McCarthy Math 1 by 5. This is a daily math intervention that I created that's aligned to the past standards, the Common Core standards. Now I know it says Common Core and I know that we're in the best standards, but there are a lot of resources in this program to help you. The 155, it stands for 155 video lessons for each grade level. So if you click on fourth grade, you have access to um, if you have students struggling with adding and subtracting numbers or multiplication or division or factors and multiples or fraction equivalence and comparison, all of that, look at all these units here. Okay, you just got to be careful because you have to know your standards in the best to kind of weave through some of the activities that don't really align anymore. Uh, but here, the only thing that I'm seeing that uh, compares would be the line plot. Let's see what we've got here. So here is kind of breaking down fractions on a number line. How do we put these fractions there? Right, getting them prepped and ready for line plots, understanding how to read line plots, basic line plot questions, and so on. Find the sum and all that stuff. So this is, it's not quite aligned, which is why I created Taking on the Best, but it does give you more resources to really help your students to build their confidence muscles and feel just ready to rock and roll with math, right? So that's McCarthy Math 155, and that is the standard. So I hope that it makes sense, everything that we've gone over in this video lesson. I hope that breaking down the standard helps it to be more clear for you and that you know what you have access to with your membership. And before we go, I just wanna remind you that what you wake up and you choose to do with your life every day, it really does matter. Thank you so much for all that you do for education, for your students, for showing up on a daily basis, showcasing what the best version of yourself looks like. That way you can inspire your students to do the same. And also thank you so much for inviting me into your educational space. I love being able to support you and support your students and put some time back into your pocket so you can enjoy your nights and your weekends. Speaking of time, I know that you are busy, so I will let you go and I will see you in another episode real soon, okay? Bye. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.